transcribed from Hollywood, the Phil Harris, Alice Faye Show. For your enjoyment, here is the Phil Harris, Alice Faye Show, written by Ray Singer and Dick Chevrolet, with Elliot Lewis, Walter Tetley, Robert North, Janine Roos, Anne Whitfield, Walter Sharp and his music, yours truly, Bill Foreman, and starring Alice Faye and Phil Harris. Lately, Phil has realized that he isn't getting any younger. And he must make preparations for the security of his old age. As we look in now, we find him planning a steady income for his future. Now look, baby Alice, you've heard the record eight times, so let's try and do it the way they do it. But, Daddy, I'm tired. Now, never mind. Now, let's do it once more. Here we go. Here's a happy tune That'll bring you a smile of the world When you croon it, you're really in style And the title is Samsung <laughs> It's as catchy as can be With a slight little beat And the melody squeak Keeps you tapping your feet And, and the title is Samsung <laughs> With a lesson on your mind You put the day in the bills You must pay Keep your head turning No, around. no, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's not the way that Bing and Gary do it <laughs> Look, kid, you'll never make a buck for me If you're gonna sing that way <laughs> Why can't my kids have talent like Crosby So they can support me? But, Daddy, I don't like to sing Why should I be forced to sing Just so I can support you? What's good enough for your mother Is good enough for you <laughs> Alice, please I'll thank you not to interrupt while I'm coaching my little money makers. <laughs> now try it again, baby Alice. Why waste time with her, Daddy? Let a kid in here that knows what she's doing. I've learned everything from you, Daddy. <laughs> oh, so you think you can sing, huh? Are you kidding? Happens to be my business. <laughs> Minute, Phyllis. Get lost, Myrtle. <laughs> Stand back and give me a little room while I lay this one on him. <laughs> well, okay, honey, then, then uh, we'll do Sam's song together. Please, Pop. I work alone. <laughs> Get a load of this. Oh, come with me to Alabama. Come and see my dear old mammy. She's boiling eggs and frying hammy. And that's what I like about the South. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't have to worry about this one. <laughs> Only six years old and already she's got talent. That kid will be making money before she reaches her obsolescence. <laughs> Alice, I guarantee that little Phyllis is going to grow up being able to sing just like me. Is that what you really want, dear? Now, Phil, leave the children alone. My girls don't have to sing for money. Maybe yours don't, but mine do. <laughs> Besides, if it's good enough for Bing's kids, it's good enough for yours. But, Phil, we don't need the money. Bing does. <laughs> He's the only one I know of who has as much money as you do. The only difference is that you have it in the old bills. <laughs> you don't really want your children to support you, do you? Certainly I want them to support me. Why not? Bing has his kids doing all the singing for him. He don't have to work. All he does is sit around all day squeezing Minute Maids to get orange juice. <laughs> well, Phil, I think it's fine for the girls to learn how to sing, but you're not the one to teach them. That's what I like about the South is not a song for girls or women or men All right. or dogs. Wait a minute. <laughs> Look, honey, that's no way to talk to one of RCA's biggest recording stars. Why, do you realize that my record of The Thing has sold 1,200,000 copies? It sold 1,100,000 copies. Don't tell me I made them. Don't tell me I bought them. <laughs> didn't buy that many. I didn't, huh? 
Those aren't flapjacks piled up in the guest room. <laughs> That's a woman for you. She buys a lousy million records, and right away she makes a big thing out of it. <laughs> Besides, I don't have to teach the girls that type of stuff. I'm capable of better things. I'll teach them them semi-classical stuff like, uh, like, uh, Water Boy. <laughs> Sweet Mystery of Life. Or one for the road, to Mandalay. <laughs> Listen closely, kids, and watch how I do this. I love life, so I want to live. I want to live. I want to live. With a voice like that, would you mind telling me why? Oh. <laughs> all right, Lindley, all right. Now, where did you come from? I heard the screaming, and I rushed in. I thought somebody was being attacked. No, nobody's being attacked. I was just singing to my children. Shame on you, Curly. Going around trying to puncture little kids' eardrums. <laughs> my voice wouldn't puncture anybody's eardrums. Anyway, the girls like to hear me sing. Don't you, baby Alice? Eh? <laughs> I should have known better than to ask the one with the tin air. <laughs> All right, you can run along, girls. The lesson's over for today. Hey, Curly, what's the idea of the singing lesson? Well, I'm trying to prepare him for the future. And little Phyllis has a lot of talent. And I'm going to train her to be a professional singer. Well, that's no career for a woman. There's so many more important jobs that a woman can hold today. Like what? Well, there's a crying need for girl jockeys in Tijuana. <laughs> Hi, Remley. Or you can stretch her neck and make her the goose girl at Hollywood Park. <laughs> They're not racing there now. For next year, it'll take a year to stretch her neck. All right, Remley. <laughs> now, what's wrong with a woman being a professional singer? I've done all right. Oh, yeah, but you're different, Alice. You can't teach a child to have a voice like yours. You were born with unusual talent. True. <laughs> The girls do have good voices, and with a little training, they might amount to something. I think we ought to get them a good coach. A coach, huh? Well, maybe you're right. Mm -hmm. Well, we're rehearsing our show in a couple of hours, and I'd better get dressed. Okay, honey, we'll meet you at NBC later, huh? You know something, Frankie Alice has got an idea. Yeah? Sure. I'd like to get a good coach for the kids. You know, somebody with a nice, soft, cultured voice that has resonance. Mm hmm the kind of a voice that sends you. A voice... Hey, Curly, I know just the person. She's a woman, and if she can teach your kids to sound like her, you got nothing to worry about. Let's go see this girl. All right, Remley. Wait a minute. This girl... She's uh... okay, Curly. I give you the word of a gentleman. We'll bring him along, and I'll go. <laughs> now, look, I'll take one more chance, Remley. I'll go with you. Now, let's go. You know something? What? You know where it is, huh? Yeah. I'm going with you, Dad. And pretty soon my girls will be able to sing just like me. And then they'll have no trouble getting a job. I don't know. <laughs> there ain't much demand for female baritones. <laughs> Tallulah does all right. <laughs> baritones do okay if you don't believe me. Listen, Dad. <laughs> A preacher went out walking, t'was on one Sunday morn. It was against his religion, but he took his gun along. He shot himself some mighty fine quail and one little mealy hair. But on his way returning home, he met a great big grizzly bear. Now the bear got down in the middle of the road, on all fours like a great big toad, and looked that preacher right square in the eye. And the preacher looked at him and said, bye-bye. The preacher got up, took out the run. The bear right after that preacher did come, and he run, and he run for about a mile. And the preacher sat down and rested a while. The preacher got up, started again. Bear right after him with more vim And he ran and he ran till he spotted a tree Said up on the limb is the place for me Bear reached up, made a grab for him Preacher leaped and he made the limb Pulled himself up and turned about Cast his eyes to the skies and he did shout Oh Lord, you delivered Daniel from the lion's den Also delivered Jonah from the belly of the whale And then the Hebrew chilling from the fiery furnace With a good book do declare Yes, Lord, if you can't help me for goodness sake Don't help that bear 
now just about then that limb let go and the breach come tumbling down. Reached in his pocket, pulled his razor out just before he hit the ground. He hit the ground with an awful bang. It was a terrible sight. That preacher and the bear with the razor in his hair just a cutting left and right. They rolled around on the ground. The preacher was up and then he was down. The bear let out an awful moan and looked like the preacher was holding his own. Said if I get out of here alive with that good book, I will abide. I'll never sin on Sabbath day and Sunday. Come, I'll pray and pray into the heavens. He did glance at Lord, just give me one more chance. Then his suspenders gave away and he knocked that bear ten feet away. Preacher got up, made a bound for the tree where he'd be safe and sound. Pulled himself up and turned about, cast his eyes to the skies and he did shout, Oh Lord, you delivered Daniel from the lion's den. Also delivered Jonah from the belly of the whale and then the Hebrew children of the fiery furnace of the good book do declare, Yes, Lord, if you can't help me for goodness sakes, don't help that Why'd you bring me to this place? This is a nightclub. All I'm looking for is a voice coach. She works here, Curly. And when you hear this girl's voice, it's sensational. Well, what does she do here? Is, uh, is she the star of the show? No. Well, does she sing with a band? Not exactly. Every time I hear a voice, it does something to me. I swoon with ecstasy. Well, well what does she do here? Cigars. Cigarettes. <laughs> Gardenia. <laughs> 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 Bradley, will you get up off the floor? You mean to tell me that this cigarette girl is the voice coach? Yeah. If your kids can pick up her voice inflections, they'll be sensational. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's all I need is my two kids walking around the house saying, Cigar. Sing around. <laughs> Gardenia. <laughs> Remley, I don't think that's quite the kind of a coach Alice had in mind for the girls. Oh, Curly, give her a chance. The poor kid needs a job. She has a job. But she don't make enough to be able to dress right. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that skimpy costume she has to wear. It only reaches from under her arms to just below her hips. She can't even afford a whole dress. That's a whole dress. She just ain't in it for her <laughs> Now, Curly, at least talk to the girl. Let me call her over. I want you to get a load of her talent. <laughs> Don't bother. I can see it from here. <laughs> Remley, I can't hire this girl. Will you come on now? Let's get down to rehearsal. Uh, well, you run along, Curly. I'll meet you there. I have a little business to attend to. All right, but don't forget to show up. Cigars, cigarettes, chewing tobacco. If you're... <laughs> Chewing tobacco. <laughs> well, I guess she ran out of gardenia. <laughs> I'll see you later, Remley. Yeah, okay, Curly. Eh, Curly's making a mistake not hiring that girl. We can't let all that talent go to waste. I guess it's up to me to do something for her. Oh, uh, miss? Yes, sir? Is there anything I can do for you? Sit down, my child. <laughs> There's nothing you can do for me, but I'm in a position to do things for you. <laughs> How'd you like to be in pictures, honey? I wouldn't. You're fighting me. <laughs> Being a producer, I can do things for you, dear. You're a producer? Surely you've heard of Cecil B. de Remley. <laughs> well, what pictures did you ever produce? Did you see Born Yesterday? Yes. Well, 
You're looking at a man who saw the same picture. <laughs> I told you, I don't want to be in pictures, but I like to sing. If you could get me a job with the band... You're coming to the right man, honey. Consider yourself working. Do you ever hear of the Phil Harris band? You mean you can get me a job with Phil Harris? That's a cinch. I happen to own the outfit. <laughs> Harris just fronts it for me. <laughs> I'll put it in writing. Uh, by the way, uh, what's your name, honey? Carmen Lombardo. <laughs> You're not one of Guy's brothers, are you? No, I, uh, I just happen to have the same name Yeah, well, here's the contract It says, uh, I hereby agree to pay Miss Carmen Lombardo $500 a week, 52 weeks Signed, Phil Harris Now, uh, about the date I'll pick you up later as soon as I get back from band rehearsal. Oh, I'll go with you, darling. It'll give me a chance to practice with the band. Uh, well, I don't know. You see... Don't argue, Cecil. If you want a date tonight, I'm going to band rehearsal with you. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, now, look, Carmen... You better wait out in the hall, dear, while I go into Curly's dressing room and set things up for you. Very well. But don't keep me waiting too long. <laughs> yeah. Now that I signed her to a contract, I may have a little trouble getting her on the show. Of course, if I could talk Curly into letting Carmen take Alice's place, I... Yeah, it's worth a try. Oh, there you are, Rummy. Yeah. Where you been? Oh, well, I was detained. Uh, Curly, I've been thinking... You're working Alice much too hard lately. What do you mean? Well, after all, she's the mother of two children, she's getting along in years, and she's entitled to retire. <laughs> yeah, but she wants to work. She makes a lot of money. So what? Seabiscuit was a big moneymaker, too. <laughs> <laughs> but after a while, they retired him and put him out to pasture, and he has nothing to do but eat grass. <laughs> Yeah, but I don't know if Alice would like to live in a pasture. <laughs> Besides, grass gives her heartburn. <laughs> anyway, I could never get anybody to replace Alice on the show. Yeah, it would be tough. But I'm sure you could find somebody if you looked around. Looked around where? Right in back of you. Cigars, cigarettes. Sardinia. Remley, get that tobacco auctioneer out of here <laughs> Take Speedy Riggs back to Kentucky <laughs> Now get out of here chewing tobacco Let's get out of here I don't want... Curly That's no way to talk to the new vocalist That you just signed to a contract What do you mean I just signed? I don't even know that girl I'll introduce you, Curly I want you to meet Carmen Lombardo I don't care what... <laughs> Carmen Lombardo Egad, how you've changed <laughs> You're not the little coquette I used to know <laughs> No, no, she's not that Carmen Hey, she'll look great standing up in front of the band, Curly You want to put her in front of my musicians? Yeah Are you kidding, Elliot? <laughs> That's like dangling a sardine in front of a school of barracuda. <laughs> Look, uh, Carm. I'm sorry, honey, but we can't use you with this band. Oh, but you've got to hire me. I quit my job. I have no money. I can't pay my room rent. And, and my, my mother, mother needs, needs an operation. <laughs> Making fun of me. Mother does need an operation. Oh, oh, well, well, that's different. And uh, in that case, we'll we'll be glad to help. Then you'll give me the job. No, send your mother around, and we'll operate on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, please, lady, lady, please. 
Now stop it. You're breaking my heart. Don't cry. Don't do it. I... Hey, she cries pretty good, don't she? <laughs> Things cry up high. She cries nice and low. I like that. Yeah. Look, lady, will you please stop with the tears? Well, stop crying. I tell you, I can't. Carmen, you're getting my feet wet. <laughs> look, miss, miss, look. You can have the job if you'll just stop bawling. Uh, oh, oh, you great, big, wonderful man. Oh, you're so kind and thoughtful. I, I could just... Kiss you and kiss you and kiss you. Carmen, you mustn't. Emily, let this girl talk. <laughs> I'm ready to start to work right now. Shall we go in and rehearse my song? Now, not so fast. You wait here in my dressing room and I'll call you when I'm ready for you. Come on, Remley. Uh, don't try any tricks, boys. Remember, I have a contract. I can't understand you. The things you get me into. What are you trying to do? I don't want that dame around here. We got to get rid of her before Alice sees her. We can't, Curly. Carmen has a contract and she's liable to sue us for everything you got. All right, all right. <laughs> now let's get into the studio and maybe we can talk Alice out of singing. I never heard. Oh, where have you been, Phil? I'm ready to rehearse my song again. Oh, yeah, your song. Uh -huh. uh, uh, look, honey. You know, after thinking it over, I don't think you ought to sing. You know, I just found out that singing is not healthy. It causes baldness. <laughs> That's right. Some of our best crooners haven't got a hair on their head. Well, maybe so, but you're not talking me out of singing. I'm going up on the bandstand and do my song right now. But, honey, I tell Curly, you... Let her sing. I got an idea. After she's through singing, we'll make believe that we didn't hear a sound come out of her. <laughs> Go ahead and sing, Alice. We'd love to hear you. Why fight the feeling, the feeling, the fabulous feeling? Why fight the feeling? We're face to face with romance. Why miss the magic? The moment of magic Why miss the magic Relax and give it a chance We're right on the very brink Of kiss number one There's no time to stop and think It's too late to run The beginning has begun So why fight the feeling The feeling that started us reeling Why fight the feeling that says tonight is the night Why fight the feeling when it's oh so right Why fight the feeling The feeling The fabulous feeling Why fight the feeling Relax and give it a chance We're right on the very brink Of kiss number one There's no time to stop and think It's too late to run The beginning has begun So why, why, why The feeling, the feeling That started us reeling Why, why, why The feeling that says Tonight is the night why fight the feeling when it's all so right? Well, how was that, fellas? Hey, the band sounded great, didn't it, Frankie? Yeah, but I thought Alice said she was going to sing. <laughs> I guess she changed her mind. Now, what are you talking about? I just finished my song. I didn't hear her sing a note. Frankie, didn't you hear me sing? I can't answer that. Oh, why not? I can't even hear you talking. <laughs> Frankie, oh. Uh, I should have my tongue cut out. Why don't you have it done by the same guy that removed your brain? 
right, fellas, all right, out with it. Why are you trying to keep me from singing? Are you trying to get rid of me, Phil? Don't be silly, honey. Why should I want to get rid of you? Who could ever take your place? Hey, Mr. Harris! What? Who's that dame you got stashed away in your dressing room? Julia! <laughs> get on out of here, Julia. Oh, no, want... wait a minute. Just a minute, Phil. <laughs> Julia, what about this dame in Mr. Harris's dressing room? Who is she? I don't know. As soon as I walked in, she looked at me and tried to sell me a gardenia. <laughs> Gardenia? Oh, uh, um, um, oh, Alice, uh, that must be that little old flower lady that always comes around. She's 80 years old, dear. If she's 80, she better put more clothes on before she gets pneumonia. <laughs> I'm gonna find out who's in there. Come on, boys, we'll see who's in that dressing room. But, honey, I don't Come think... Come on! Cigars, cigarettes, <laughs> gardenias... Hmm. What are you doing here? I'm waiting for Mr. Harris. All right, Phil, start talking. <laughs> Who is she? Well, um, well, that is, um, well, um, well, I don't know. I never saw her before. Oh, thrillers. <laughs> you know who I am. It's Grandma. <laughs> Why, Granny, when did you get in from Tennessee? Hey, Alice, I want you to meet my grandmother. This is a grandmother? <laughs> yes, it is. Where did your grandfather hang out? <laughs> well, you never told me you had such a young, shapely grandmother. Well, you know Grandpa. He gets a new model every year. <laughs> doesn't have a car and he All hasn't... right, all right, you can stop now. Miss, who are you? I'm the new singer Mr. Harris hired to replace the old girl he had. <laughs> who are you? I'm the old girl. <laughs> and I've got news for you. I'm still with him. But I have a contract with him. I have a contract with him, too. Mine is signed by Mr. Harris. Who signed yours? A minister and two witnesses. <laughs> Let's see you top that one. <laughs> I think she's got you, Speedy. <laughs> Alice, I didn't sign no contract with her. Frankie did. Well, if Frankie signed it, it's not valid. You might as well, uh... Run along, miss. I've never been so humiliated in all my life. And it's for you, Mr. Remley. I never want to see you again. Goodbye. But, darling, I... I, I uh... <laughs> there goes the only girl I ever loved. <laughs> Vaughn Monroe. <laughs> Her name's Carmen Lombardo. Well, I was close. That's close. <laughs> all right, all right, let's go home. And you boys walk in front of me so I can keep my eye on you. Remember Where did I... you find that girl? Oh, she was a cigarette girl in a nightclub, and Frankie fell for her sultry voice. Oh, Frankie did, huh? You wouldn't fall for a sultry voice, would you, Phil? Of course not. Remley's a weakling. I don't know what's the matter with you, Frankie. Being taken in by a dame just because she has... Cigars, cigarettes, yeah. gardenia. Pardon me, miss. You've got a lot of talent. I can get you a job. You can stop, a... Curly. It's only your wife. Oh. <laughs> this program was produced in... Stay tuned for Hedda Hopper's radio column, then Theater Guild on NBC.